So I thought I'd just do a quick video of uh, this uh, Roscoe Pi uh, display app for the, the Stratix. So uh, I've got a uh, Stratix set up here, a battery for a power source, and uh, uh, the screen itself. Uh, so I will turn this on. And you'll see it go through its uh, normal uh, boot up process. And that could be beautified, I just didn't bother. It's pretty quick. And in a couple seconds, the uh, uh, UI is, is up and running. So I'll try to go uh, into a little bit of uh, uh, detail about uh, how everything works. So I'll just go over the this the screen fairly fairly quickly on the side there is the uh, vertical speed and the uh, altitude on the other side is the ground speed uh, note that's not a true airspeed because right now the, the the Stratix doesn't have any access to the actual uh, true airspeed so uh, that's just GPS derived uh, speed <clears throat> but if you have a Stratix you already know that in the middle here is a you know a standard roll indicator uh, and the artificial horizon uh, the reason this bottom part is so huge is because it also doubles as the traffic display uh, of course because I'm, I'm in the basement there's no uh, there's no signal here uh, so uh, it has no idea what my uh, GPS position is, uh, and I probably wouldn't be able to see receive any traffic either. So uh, uh, it's kind of tough to show you uh, what the the traffic looks like. But if you want to see the traffic display, you can uh, uh, you can see it on the website. Um, you know, there's uh, screenshots and stuff that show you know what everything uh, is and what everything does. So real quick, I'll just show a, a couple added things. Uh, there's a thing for adding a heading bug and a wind bug. So if I want to add a heading, say 250, it'll put a, a heading bug there and you know it'll rotate with the, the heading like you would expect it to. And uh, the other one is the uh, wind bug. So say the wind is, I don't know, uh, 190. Uh, it'll put the uh, wind bug there, and just like the heading bug, it'll it'll rotate with the with the heading. Uh, I can't simulate the heading either because uh, uh, if it's not moving, it uh, the Stratix won't update the, the the heading. So I should probably go over how this is hooked up. Uh, first of all, this is a uh, a Kumon uh, seven inch capacitive touch screen. This one here is. Uh, uh, 800 by 480. They do make a higher resolution one that's 1024 by 600, I believe. Uh, the uh, uh, the lower resolution one's about 60 bucks on Amazon. That's what this is, and the higher resolution one uh, is a little more. And there, there's ones from other companies, but and they probably work fine. Uh, this is just the only one I have any experience with. Uh, uh, the one thing I wanted to go over in this video though was uh, how this is hooked up. Uh, this screen has two uh, USB ports on the bottom here, if I can get underneath there. Uh, there's two USB ports, along with, the, of course, the HDMI port. Uh, the reason I'm not plugging two power, uh, a power one in and the, the data cable for the touch screen is because the, the screen gets confused uh, when both are plugged in and uh, the, the touch screen stops working. So to get around that, what I did was uh, coming out of here, uh, you see these two thick cables, and then that that thinner one is the just the uh, is just the uh, GPS antenna. But uh, these two thicker cables, what that is, that, that's uh, one uh, USB plugged into the to the one spare uh, uh, USB port that that's left after you know you have the two radios and the GPS plugged in. There's one extra. USB left over, and that's what that's plugged into. The power side is going to this uh, battery, uh, and then the data side uh, is uh, going into here. And they're they're uh, uh, they're uh, the cable has the wiring set up so it will uh, put power the power from the battery and the data from the the Raspberry Pi on that same cable going to the screen. So you have enough power. Uh, running to the uh, screen and the data from the Raspberry Pi so the screen doesn't get confused and, and disable the touch screen when you plug power into that other port. Uh, it's a little complicated, but uh, you know once it's hooked up in the plane and, and you don't have to dick around with it, it's uh, 
it should be fine. Uh, I, I have zero problems with it now that, now that I'm using that, that cable. This uh, pigtail here is uh, just plugged into the, uh, US, or the uh, Ethernet port on the uh, Raspberry Pi. The way I have this set up is uh, if I plug uh, Ethernet into it, it'll connect to my router and I can I can do whatever I want. It's just an internet internet connected Linux box from that point, uh, and I can uh, you know upgrade it or whatever. So on uh, on here, if I click this menu button and uh, I select upgrade, I won't actually do it because it's not plugged in. But it'll say you know you're <clears throat> you're about to upgrade the software. Are you sure you want to do that and uh, you select yes, and then it'll. Uh, what what that will do is go pull the uh, source code and any other stuff that's been added to the repository. Uh, it'll pull that down from GitHub, uh, recompile the software, uh, install it, and then uh, restart itself. Uh, when this uh, when you uh, do that, depending on how much has changed, you know you, it may go back to the desktop for for quite a while before it act, the the user interface comes back, but. You know, if it you know if it's going north of 15 minutes, there's probably something wrong. Uh, there's no progress box right now. I may add that later in the in the future that shows you know how how far along it is. But right now, it's just something that happens in the background, and then as soon as the the uh, then the new uh, uh, executable is compiled, it just uh, it starts itself again. Okay, I'll just like no there. And this, uh, the the other stuff on here. Oh, uh, the uh, plus and minus buttons. Uh, if you see here right now, it's configured. Now the outer edge of that heading indicator is 30 nautical miles. So, so right now this is uh, uh, set at uh, 30 nautical miles. So this uh, outer edge here uh, would be uh, 30 nautical miles from you, which is you know there, and. Uh, yeah, that's how the uh, the traffic is displayed, and that's why the the heading indicator is so large. Plus and minus buttons uh, zoom in and out of that. If I can get that, just I'll use the minus button. So, you see, I'm decreasing it or increasing it, and that will you know sort of like zoom in on what traffic is you know uh, uh, close to you. So. Uh, if uh, right now, if I set that to 20 now, the uh, outer edge is, is 20 nautical miles. So it's kind of like a zoom in and out. <clears throat> uh, the other uh, functionality, and you know, there's not a whole lot to it, but uh, the rest of it is uh, the reset level is this, uh, it calls the same routine on the Stratix to level the uh, the airplane, or the, not to level the airplane, but level the, uh, uh, you know, what the Stratix considers level. Uh, and it's actually doing it on the Stratix. It's not just recalculating it here. It's actually changing it on the Stratix. Uh, reset G-Meter, the same uh, same thing that's on their uh, their user interface. If you use their web interface, uh, exit Roscoe Pi just goes back to the the X Windows desktop. So you'll you'll just see that you know that uh, top bar there, and then uh, the uh, what I have right now is just. Uh, you know, just a, a blank desktop with my uh, uh, channel logo on it. So if I double click on that again, there we go. And then you're uh, you're back in the in the application. If I uh, select uh, uh, shut down, it shuts down the the whole thing, which isn't super useful. I I, I use it as a developer testing stuff, but uh, in reality, you can just shut the power off. It's not going to hurt anything. Okay, uh, one uh, small thing that I uh, forgot to mention before is uh, if you click on the GPS position, I've got it set up uh, in a window now so it is locked onto the GPS. If you uh, click on there, uh, it'll uh, you know show you the, the status of the, the satellites that it has locked and what it's tracking and everything. And you just tap it to get to, to get rid of it. Uh, one other thing I was going to show, uh, as long as I have it set up here uh, closer to the window, is uh, uh, I've got it connected to a uh, an Ethernet cable, uh, so I'm going to go ahead and, and upgrade the software. Uh, if you look here, uh, right now there's no button for uh, filtering the traffic. Uh, I realize that 
when I had it out at the airport. Uh, and because I'm uh, close enough to a, a Class Bravo uh, airport, uh, the, the traffic uh, uh, in the display is a little bit insane. So I figured I'd uh, add some some filtering similar to what uh, you know For Flight and a lot of the other apps uh, do. So. Uh, once I do the upgrade, it'll show uh, only the uh, uh, 5,000 above and 5,000 below. Uh, it won't filter anything distance-wise. It'll just filter out the stuff that's you know in the flight levels that that is not going to affect you. Uh, you know that's 10, 20,000 feet over you, uh, as well as you know stuff on the ground. If you're you know over 5,000 feet, you're not gonna you're not gonna see it. So. Uh, I'll go ahead and uh, upgrade this. Uh, I've gone ahead and uh, pre-compiled it in in the background, so the upgrade will be almost in, instantaneous. Uh, normally, when you uh, do an upgrade, uh, it's going to do a bunch of uh, compilation in the background, and you know it could take several minutes before the the UI comes up. But because I've already uh, done the the CPU intensive stuff, it'll just uh, it'll just go away and come right back. Then you'll see that new button uh, with the with the upgrade. So if I click here, upgrade, uh, upgrading Roscoe Pi requires an active network connection. Select OK to download and install the latest Roscoe Pi version. Yes, I want to. And away it goes, and it comes back. And again, because it was already pre-compiled, that, that's why it was so fast. It wouldn't normally be that fast. And now I have that filter button, and I can turn on all traffic or uh, just close traffic, uh, and it'll change color depending on you know which one you you want. And right now uh, I, I'm in a, in the basement, so the I'm just not picking up. I can uh, uh, pick up the the occasional plane going by, even with the the receiver here in the basement. But right now it's not seeing anything, so I can, can't really demonstrate it. But uh, uh, I have tried it, and it does work. So uh, that's that bit. So this uh, case uh, isn't really a case. It's just some leftover Kydex that I had. Uh, you can see on the on the sides here. It's just a strip of the Kydex on each side to kind of hug hides uh, a little bit of the ugliness on the side of the uh, the screen. Although it, it doesn't look bad just on its own. Uh, the screen itself has little uh, nibs uh, right here here. Uh, here and here. If you look it up on Amazon, you'll see what I mean. It's uh, the uh, the board itself is blue, and then there's uh, uh, you can see my uh, funky little stand that I made because I left the the RAM mount in the in the plane, so I had to build something to 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 hold it one, to make this video. But to, that's just screwed on to another uh, piece of Kydex on the back, uh, and you know there's a cutout for the uh, the port. And that's literally all it is. Uh, if you want to get uh, uh, crazy with uh, a 3D printer or you're good at making cases or whatever. Uh, I'm sure you could make something a little nicer, but uh, this is good enough for now. Uh, uh, it works, it covers up the screen, and uh, it looks okay. So if you have any uh, suggestions of, of what could be added, within reason, you know, I'm not going to put a moving map on it, but uh, uh, if you have any suggestions uh, of what could be improved, what could be added, uh, you know, leave them in the comments below and uh, See what I can do. Okay, thanks for watching.